Would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Chelsea and I have started to develop a new routine because of all that's happening. For a while there, our routines were just thrown out of whack and it was really hard, hard to find time to take care of ourselves, both emotionally and spiritually. And I think you might be experiencing some of this too, and I think that's pretty normal for seasons like this. Yet Chelsea and I soon learned that it wasn't a good enough excuse for us just to keep our life in shambles because our schedules were, had been turned upside down. So over time, we've gotten back into a new rhythm to take care of ourselves. Usually we'll wake up to make some coffee and then we'll take some time to do morning prayer. But one thing that we've added to our new rhythm is watching the news. Neither of us were big news watchers to begin with. So this is definitely something that we've had to incorporate into our lives. And we don't like to watch a lot, maybe like 15 to 30 minutes a day, but we do try to stay caught up with what's happening. But we've been also doing some experimenting with the news. Uh, whenever what we're, what we're watching is boring or not interesting to us, we'll flip through a few of the different news channels to see just how different they are. And this shouldn't come as any surprise to you, but they're not saying even remotely the same thing. It's unreal how different each channel's interpretation of the truth is, or at least what they think the truth is. One channel praises the president for doing this, while the next channel demonizes him for doing the same thing. One channel loves the CDC. The other channel thinks it's an absolute joke. Dr. Fauci is either the new frontrunner for being made a saint, or he's the Antichrist. There's really no middle ground here. And it kind of makes you wonder, what can be trusted? What information is actually worth our time? And maybe most importantly, who's telling the truth? Are any of these channels actually doing the investigative work or is it all just clickbait? I think it goes without saying that all of us don't really care for this slanted telling of the news. If I had to guess, everybody would be in agreement that all we want is the truth. We all long for the truth for the real, the authentic, and the honest. And who we listen to or what we watch is all boiled down to whom we trust. If you trust this news station, you'll watch them. If you trust this journal, you'll read them, and etc., etc. It seems like the entire fabric of our society is predicated upon trust. For example, you can't have a good relationship with your friend or with your spouse if you can't trust them. You aren't going to learn anything at school if you don't trust your teacher. Work is going to be really tough if you can't trust your boss. And make no mistake, the same question is being asked of churches and pastors all over the world. Can we trust the church or our priest in the midst of all of this? We're all hearing different ideas and theories about COVID-19. How did it start? Where did it start? And most importantly, how should we deal with it? What kind of regulations and norms are good and what ones are bad? And maybe the big elephant in the room is, what are we supposed to do about the government imposing rules over and against our freedom? And at what cost are we doing all of this? Everybody has an opinion to all of these questions. And the question we all need to answer is, who are we going to listen to? Just take your pick. I promise that you will find somebody to tell you exactly what you want to hear. But what we need is something more than that. What we need right now is a truth teller. We need somebody to tell us what is authentic and what is true, and what is honest. Otherwise, we'll fall victim to this endless news cycle, and the countless blog posts, and the never-ending queue of YouTube conspiracy theories. And if we're being honest with ourselves, if we're truly being honest, the things we listen to, whether it's the news or our friends' ramblings, these things, 
they affect us. We are influenced by the emotional turmoil happening all around us. And the things we listen to change the way we think and feel about COVID-19 and its fallout. And so I want to ask you a question this morning. Who are you listening to? Where are you seeking truth? Seriously, ask yourself that question. Who are you listening to? Where are you seeking truth? And then I want to ask you a follow-up question. Are these voices healthy for you? And what I mean is, when you finish listening or watching, do you have more peace or less peace? We're about two months into this pandemic, and I think it's about time for us to take some self-inventory to see how we're doing. Some of us might be spiraling. Some of us might be coping in unhealthy ways. Some of us might find it really hard to pray or to focus on much of anything. And the reason why is because we're living with some intense emotions. And it's hard to decipher what's real and what's fake when we don't have the ability to see through our own emotional blinders. We need somebody to help us, don't we? We need somebody to cut through the fog and give us some light, to show us some truth. The gospel reading today reminds us that we do, in fact, have the help that we need. As we all ache for truth, as we all constantly seek the best information out there, we need to be reminded that we have been gifted with what John calls the spirit of truth. As Christians, Jesus has sent this spirit into our lives to guide and direct us through life's stormy gales. And this spirit of truth is far more reliable than the newscasters or your favorite blogger or the YouTube channel that you subscribe to. And Jesus promises that this spirit of truth is ours. Now, don't mishear me. Just because we have been gifted with the spirit doesn't mean that we don't have to stay informed. It's a good thing to stay informed with what's happening. But what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives is gifting us with an identity that's not tied to the news cycle. We can watch the stock market, but we don't have to be consumed by it. We can watch the news, but we don't have to be controlled by it. Our identity isn't tied to those things. Rather, our identity as Christians is tied into what Jesus calls the paraclete. This word is what's used by Jesus to name the Holy Spirit in John chapter 14. Translators have always had a hard time capturing this word in English. Paraclete is a word you might be, might be familiar with, or maybe you've at least heard it used in churches before. But literally, the paraclete can be translated as the one called alongside. And specifically, the one called alongside to help. And to help especially in critical situations. Culturally, this word was used to talk about like an appearance in court. And the paraclete was the person who would stand beside you to give you a true, helpful, encouraging testimony of support. Essentially, the paraclete was the witness who would give the testimony you needed. This is the person whose words might keep you out of jail. Let's just say you want the paraclete to be on your team. Many translations have given a good attempt to translate this word. I don't know if you have a Bible in front of you right now, but go ahead and see how your Bible translates this word. It's found in John chapter 14, verse 16. Some of the more frequent words that Bible translations use are the advocate, or the helper, or the counselor, or the comforter. But I wonder if there might be a better word for us considering the season that we're in. I don't know if I have the liberty or the authority to suggest something like this, but I think one way to translate the paraclete might be a true friend. Consider this. A true friend is somebody who will drop all things in the case of an emergency to help. 
A true friend is somebody of whom you can trust all things. But more so than that, a true friend is willing to tell you the truth, regardless of the truth hurting your feelings. Your true friend might tell you something you'd rather not hear about yourself. But then again, a true friend, your true friend, might tell you exactly what you need in a time of trouble or uncertainty or anxiety. And the Holy Spirit, this paraclete, our true friend, does that for us. He is both defender and prosecutor. He is in all situations a truth teller because he is the spirit of truth. And my friends, we need him. We need to block out all the white noise in our lives that's affecting us negatively. This is an anxious activity and it's not helping us. We aren't in control of these things. And guys, that's okay. We can't control the news cycle. We can't control bloggers. We can't control YouTube channels with all of these conspiracy theories. But the reason why we engage in these anxious, anxious activities are mere attempts to control what is true. It's an, like an attempt to deceive ourselves of what's real. We want to be in charge of our own reality. We want to be in control of our own lives. We want to be able to go to Safeway without wearing a mask. We want to have our friends over for dinner. We want things to go back to normal. We just want to go out to dinner. And so what we do is we look for a way to control what is true. And we get angry when things aren't going our way. But as Christians, I think the right posture, the right, right way we engage with the truth is not to try to control the truth, but rather to let the truth control us. Now, I'm not talking about flattening the curve. What I'm talking about is being so secure in Christ that we let the Holy Spirit be our guide and advocate. That we are so secure in our identity in Christ that we don't need to be anxious about things like our rights being taken from us. But you might be thinking, that's cute, Father Kyle, but it's much easier said than done. And you'd be right to say that. I'll confess, my fears and anxieties oftentimes get the best of me, and especially during the season. But this passage from John 14 is a reminder to us that there is a way forward. I've spent my entire sermon talking about the paraclete, our true friend, and how he is the spirit of truth for us in an age where truth seems like it's impossible to find. So how are we supposed to know if we even have this true friend that I'm talking about? What's the secret ingredient to know that the Holy Spirit is actually guiding and guarding our thoughts toward the truth? Jesus says in John 14, 21, Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, it, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Obedience. Obedience is really hard to come by. And you might be struggling mightily with finding a way to obey and keep all of Christ's commandments in this fog that we're living in. And if that's the case, I want to remind you that love always precedes obedience. What I'm saying is that it's God's love for us that rightly tunes our hearts and desires towards obedience. So that being said, if you're struggling to find stability in your faith right now, if you're having it so difficult, finding it so difficult to obey and keep God's commandments, remind yourself of God's love. The way forward is to remember that you are loved by God unconditionally. And it's his love for you that makes obeying him easier. God isn't going to impose his will to make you obey. Now, God could easily do that, but that's not the way that he does things. 
Instead, God chooses to get us to obey him simply by showing us how much he loves us. And the way he showed his love for us was by setting his, aside his rights as God, and he took on the status of a servant. Because of Jesus' love for us, he didn't claim the special privileges that come with being the Son of God. Instead, he lived a selfless and obedient life, and he died a selfless and obedient death for you. And I know for a fact that many of us are struggling with this concept of laying aside our rights. We feel like our freedom is God's given right to us as Americans. So why should we give that up? That's not right. However, that posture, I don't think, embodies the mind of Christ. If we liken ourselves to Christ, then we can see the beauty in laying aside our rights as Americans and taking on the status of a servant for the sake of others. We can mirror Christ in this posture because Christ loves us in this posture. God's love for us is so strong and so selfless that I know we can be shaped by it in such a way that causes us to have a strong and selfless love for our neighbor. So that we are getting caught up in the news cycle and becoming more and more anxious and more and more afraid. Our future is secure because Christ has loved us and he has died for us and he has been risen to life for us. So friends, remind yourselves that God loves you and that is really good news. Amen. Amen.